Hey guys, welcome to the channel again. In today's video, I'm going to look a little bit at the Arch Linux security and in particular on three programs. One is a backup program called Duplicati. Then I'm going to have a look also at an antivirus for Arch Linux called Clam AV. And finally, also at a firewall program called Firewall D. I'm not going to go too much in depth, especially on the firewall program because it can be very complex, but I just wanted to share with you these security programs that you can easily install on your installation. So let's get going. So here we are again on the KDE desktop. And the first thing I want to show you is actually a backup solution called Duplicati. It is absolutely free and open source. And if you go to duplicati.com, you can read about it. You can see some screenshots as well. This is a web browser app and it includes a lot of backup options. And the best part, of course, is that it's free and it's also available for other platforms as well. So let's go ahead and install it. So I switch over to this tab here and the Duplicati software is actually available on the Arch user repository. So you'll have to have Git activated on your system or if you install Yay, you can install directly with that. If you don't have Git installed, then I'll show you also how to install that first so that we can install Duplicati. So let me switch over to the desktop here and let me pull up a terminal here. I'll just center it here and make it a little larger. There you go. And so the first thing we need to do is to install Git. So let's install Git by typing in sudo pacman dash capital S Git and hit enter. Enter the sudo password and proceed with installation by hitting enter. And there you go. Now that we installed Git, we need also the Git URL so that we can download Duplicati. So let's go back to the browser here. And as you can see, we have here our Git clone URL. And so we'll just right click on the link and click copy link location. And then we go back to the terminal and we'll type in Git clone. And then with control shift V, we'll paste in the link and hit enter. Now, if we type in ls, we'll see we have here a Duplicati latest directory. So we'll just have to go in there. So we'll type in cd and then a d with the tab key, we autocomplete and then hit enter. Then again, ls. And we have a file here named package build and that's the one we need to make the package. So we'll type in now make pkg dash si and then a capital P and a tab key to complete and hit enter. And we'll proceed with the installation by hitting enter here. Now it's gonna take a moment to download the packages and configure them. So I'll be back in a moment. There we go. Now we proceed with the installation by hitting enter. And Duplicati is now installed. Before we can use it though, we have to start it and activate it. So let's start it first by typing in sudo systemctl start duplicati service and hit enter. Now let's pull up the same command again with the up arrow and replace start with enable and hit enter. Now let's pull up again our browser here and we open a new tab and we'll type in localhost, then a colon and then 8200. And as you can see, Duplicati starts up here. We are prompted now for a first run setup. And it says here, if your machine is a multi-user environment, you need to set a password to prevent other users from accessing data your account. I don't have a multi-user password here, so I'll click on no. If you do, you can also click yes, and you will be prompted for a password. So it's a very simple interface, but it's extremely powerful. So we are here in the overview, which at the moment is empty as I have no plans to backup anything right now, but I can click on add a backup, restore a backup or go into the settings. Let's have a look at the settings first. And again, you can set a password here if you want. And there are some other settings here like pause after startup or hibernation, interface settings and so on. You can change those accordingly to your wishes here. There is nothing specific. And let's go to the add backup option here. And here you have two options. You can configure a new backup or import from a file. So I don't have a backup right now. So I'll just configure a new backup and click next. Now we need to edit some basic settings here. So the name of the backup, well, in my case, I'll just call it backup docs. You can call it whatever you want to. 
Next, you select the encryption. So if you want to put a password here to protect your backup, you can select here one encryption option, for example, AES-256. If you don't want to have a password on your backup, you just select no encryption. In my case, I just select no encryption because this backup is going to be on an external drive. So then I click next. Now you can select the backup destination. So here you have a few options. You can select storage type as a local folder or drive. So in my case, for example, I can backup on my internal drive here. I have a second drive in my PC. Or if you click on storage type here, you can also select to backup with another protocol like FTP or with another cloud service like Dropbox, Google Drive or OneDrive and so on. For example, if I click now on Google Drive here, you can select here the path on the server. So that means if you have on your Google Drive a folder named backup, you can copy the link which appears on your browser here and paste it in here and then click on authorization ID. You will be prompted to enter your Google credentials here and at the end of the process, you will be provided with the ID which will be filled up directly here in the field. Then you click on test connection just to make sure that everything works and you can click on next. But in my case, I want to actually back up on a local drive. So I click the first option here and click on browse. And I know I have a drive here called data in my system and that's the one here. And if I expand it, I have a folder named backup here and that's the one I want to select. So I'll select the folder here and I don't need to enter a username and a password and I'll click next. Now I can select the source data. So in my case, I want to actually back up my home directory, which is already checked off. So that's fine for me. And I don't want to include temporary files because I don't need to back up those. So once I have this on, then I click next. And here I can select the schedule. So I want to run these backups automatically every day at 1 p.m. starting today. And it's going to run every day of the week, one time per day at 1 p.m. So you can select your schedule here the way you want to and then hit next. And then you have another option here for the backup retention. So by default, it will keep all the backups on your drive in my case. But if you don't want to do this, you can also select other options like delete backups that are older than, and then you can specify how old or some other options here. In my case, I go with smart backup retention because in this case, over time backups will be deleted automatically. And this is exactly the way I want to have it. Then once I'm done, I just hit save. And there you go, my backup will run first at 1 p.m. That's the time I set in my scheduler. And that's how you can backup with Duplicati on Ash Linux. Now let's move on to the next topic, which is the antivirus. So let me close up the window here and go back to the terminal. And let me clean up the terminal here. And so we want to install the antivirus. And the antivirus I'm going to install on this system here, it's called Clam AV. It's a very popular Linux antivirus system. And we can install it by typing in sudo pacman dash capital S clam AV and hit enter and enter the sudo password and hit enter and proceed with installation by hitting enter. There you go. Now the antivirus is installed and right now it's only on the command line available. But before we can use it, we have to first update its uh, virus definition. And to do this, we'll type in sudo fresh clam and hit enter and the virus definitions are going to be now updated now that we updated the virus definitions we need to also start the service so that is going to be updated automatically so to do this we'll type in sudo systemctl start clam av dash fresh clam dot service and hit enter. Now let's pull up again the same command with the up arrow and replace start with enable so that the service starts automatically at the next reboot. So we'll type in enable here and hit enter. There you go. And last but not least, let's also start now the daemon so that it starts automatically when the system boots. So to do this, we'll type in sudo systemctl start clam av dash daemon dot service and hit enter now again let's pull up the last command with the up arrow and replace start with enable so that the service is going to be started automatically at boot so we'll type in enable here and hit enter and there you go now we can also install another package to make this antivirus a little bit more GUI friendly so that we have a nice interface to work with. So to install a GUI for the antivirus, we'll type in sudo pacman-s and the package is clam tk and hit enter. 
then accept the installation by hitting enter. It's going to take a moment to download and install the packages. There you go. And now if we search for the program clamtk and hit enter there, and we have a nice interface to work with here. So let me close the terminal here. So the most important options here are the updates options. So if I click on update assistant here, it says my computer automatically receives updates. If this is the way you want to receive updates, that's fine. If you want to do everything manual, you can click the second option here. I would like to update signatures myself. And I'll go back. And another very important option here is the scheduler. So in the scheduler here, you can set a scheduler for a daily scan, and you can also set a schedule for receiving updates. But in this case, you don't need to do this as it receives it automatically. This is more useful if you want to set updates manually, and you can tell here the timer when you want to receive updates. And so if I click here on scan on a file, for example, so I know here I have a text document. So for example, I can select it and click OK and the document will be scanned for malware or viruses. And there you go, no threats found. And if I close this up, and the same goes for a scan a directory. So I could basically select here a directory and tell it to scan, and the program will scan for malware and viruses as well. So let me cancel this off. So there is still one thing we can do. It is actually to install a small plugin which activates a contextual menu so that we can scan files directly by right-clicking on them. So let me close this up and re-pull up the terminal again. We'll have to download a small plugin and I'll show you where it is. So let's go back to Firefox and I'll click here on the upstream URL and let's go to the GitHub project directly. So if we scroll down the page here, we'll see we have a plugin for every desktop environment. And what I'm looking for right now is the KDE desktop environment and that's gonna be here. So for KDE Dolphin File Manager, so I'll click on the link here. And there you go. Now we can download the file. And I'll download the zip file here. And I will just save the file. And then move over again to my Downloads folder. Just center the Windows here. And I can extract this file here. And click on Extract and save the option here and i can close this up and as you can see now we have a folder here so what we need to do we need to copy this file into a directory and we have an instruction here which is kindly provided by the author of the plugin for a manual installation and for kde5 we need to copy this command here so we'll copy this command here right click and click copy and then go back to the downloaded directory here and right click here and click on actions and click on open terminal here. And let me center the window here and then we can type in sudo and then with control shift and V, we paste the link we copied before and hit enter. We will be asked for the password and hit enter. And there you go. So let's have a look now if it works. So I'll go back to my downloads folder here. And for example, I take my text and right click on it and I go to actions. And you can see now we have a scan for threat directly here in the contextual menu. So I click on this and the system is going to be scanning for malware and viruses on this text document. There you go, no threats found, so we can close this up. So this is a very popular antivirus program for Linux and with the GUI we can manage this very easily. So the next program I want to show you is the firewall program. Well, let me close the browser here and I'll close up one of the terminals and bump the fonts on these up and clean it up. I go back also to my home directory here. And the program is called Firewall D. Firewall D is actually a firewall program which is used normally in Red Hat Linux. And it comes also with a quite complete interface. And to install it, we'll type in sudo pacman dash capital S firewall D and hit enter. And accept the installation by hitting enter. And there you go. So Firewall D can be used with the command line, but there is also a GUI included in the package. So the first thing after installing the package here, we need to start it and enable it so that it starts automatically when we boot the system. So the next step is to start the firewall. So we'll type in system CTL start Firewall D and hit enter. We are asked for the sudo password, so we'll just enter that. And now we pull up the same command with the up arrow and replace start with enable so that it's going to be started automatically at reboot and hit enter and we'll be asked again for the root password and hit enter 
and now the firewall program will be started automatically when we boot the system. Now, this firewall program, it's normally managed with a command line, but there is also a GUI installed already. And to call the GUI up, we'll type in firewall-config and hit enter. And we enter our passwords. And let me close your terminal window behind. So we have three columns on this interface. Let me expand here the first one on the left. And on the left here, you have your connection. In my case, it's wired connection one. This is my ethernet connection. And right now it's configured to use the public zone. So zones are then here in the middle column. We'll have the block zone, DMZ zone, drop zone, and so on. And then on the last column here on the right, we have the services included on the zone. And you can see with the blue dots here, which one are active and the ones without are actually deactivated. So the first thing I do always is change my zone from public to home, because for me, that's the ideal location and click OK. And I also want to make sure that the configuration is the permanent one. As for me, one time I set the rules, they have to stay the same. So now that we changed the zone to home, you can see also the home zone is now bold, is highlighted in bold, that means it's active. And if I click here, I see which services are active and which are not. So you have to want to be very careful with Firewall D because if you're using some online services like gaming services, or for example, you have a network printer like me, you'll have to go in here and enable the services and the ports as well. Otherwise it will not work. So for a normal use at home, browsing the internet and so on, it's absolutely fine to use the home zone here. But if you're using an online service, you might want to have to go in here and tweak the settings. So in my case, for example, I have a network printer here. So for this, I know I have to activate, for example, my DNS service here. I need to also activate my IPP service, the internet printing protocol. And for my scanner, I need to also activate the SANE service, which is down here. And changes are applied immediately. And then I need to also activate two ports for my printer and my scanner. So I go to ports here and click on add. And I know the TCP port for my printer is 9100. And I click OK. And I need to also open the 5353 ports with the UDP protocol and click OK. And now I know my printer is going to be working. So again, you have to be careful with the firewall configuration. If you have some online services, like I said, a network printer or eventually a gaming service, for example, you might want to go in here and tweak the settings in order to work. But for a normal home user with just internet browsing, the default configuration will work just fine. So this is it, guys. This is how you can install the Packard program called Duplicati, the antivirus, Clam AV, and Firewall D. So I want to also remind you on Saturday, we have the live stream on how to install Arch Linux. We will go a little bit more in depth about the commands used and the packages. So we have two streams coming up. One is at 2 p.m. Central European time and the other one is at 8 p.m. Central European time. So I hope to see many of you guys there. Anyway, this is it for this video, guys. Hope you liked it. Give it a thumbs up if you did and subs to the channel. Subs really helps us out, guys. And if there is anything specific you want me to cover or you have any question, please let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.